Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to be talking about the latest and greatest from AMD. Then we're going to talk about the latest and greatest from Samsung, the Galaxy Nexus, and the, I guess the latest and greatest Android as well, because it's 4.0, and a whole lot more. This is an action-packed episode coming up. The bar has been set wicked fast. It's rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Welcome back to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Ayaz Akhtar alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. How are you guys doing just before the new year? The new year's coming up. It's after Christmas. You guys excited for a brand new year? I, I am excited for a brand new year. Definitely. Most definitely. 2012 is going to be awesome. Just 20, we, 2000. Need, we need big goodness in 2012 by gum. Now, Absolutely. Have you seen the Twitter joke that there won't be a 2012? There will actually only be a, a 2011 S? <laughs> I haven't seen that. But I, I saw like that. It. I thought that was brilliant. Uh, I'd like to thank the guy, whoever was on Twitter, <laughs> for putting that up because that's pretty dang funny. Obviously, an Apple iPhone joke. But forget about Apple. Let's talk about AMD's latest Radeon HD 7970. This thing's supposed to be AMD's yeah. big comeback. It is the greatest thing because NVIDIA has been kicking its butt for way too long. Now, Marco, you have <laughs> one. Uh, how did it actually do, or actually, what's special about this first, and, and how did it do? So first, first, just a, a little correction. Um, NVIDIA had the faster single GPU than AMD, but AMD still had the fastest overall fix card, which is 6990. And this is the new 7970. That's the baby right there. He's bringing it sexy And it back. actually, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I said you were bringing sexy back. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's pretty much what he said. So, yeah, it, it actually, you know, this is a sexy graphics card. It does look really cool. You know, all glossy red. It's got the hot new uh, fan shroud, new fan. Really a good-looking card. Um, but to answer your question, Iaz, it did fantastic. Definitely, without question, the single fastest GPU we have tested. Um it's based on a totally new architecture versus the 6900 series, actually versus any other AMD graphics card. And across the board, whether it was synthetic uh, benchmarks or in-game tests, it proved to be significantly faster than AMD's previous single GPU, the 6970. And I even threw a factory overclocked 3 gig GeForce GTX 580 into the mix. And uh, the new 7970 beat that virtually well it beat that across the board a couple of tests were really close you know basically a tie um but bar none fastest single gpu out there now you well said bar, not out there yet it's gonna yeah. ship first week of january you say bar none are you expecting uh i don't know an nvidia product to maybe kick its butt pretty soon or you is, is this a safe purchase for people who think you know what nothing better than this will be out in the next three months you know, that's kind of a Ooh. tough question to answer. Let, let me explain. Hardball question, so, man. <laughs> I, it, the card was only, it was maybe, you know, 60% 60, 60 faster than a 6970, than AMD's previous uh, single GPU uh, top of the line card. But versus the 58, uh, the, the GTX 580, you're looking at 20 to 30% gains over the regular 580. Uh, 15, 10 to 15% gains over a 3 gig uh, overclocked 580, which you can, have you been, been able to buy for the last few months? So no when joke. NVIDIA releases their, their next single GPU, you can bet your butt it's going to be more than 15% faster than the GTX 580. So I don't know when it's going to happen, but I, I fully expect uh, NVIDIA to be able to release a single GPU that overtakes the 7970. When that happens, Nobody's quite sure yet. There's rumors are it won't be till the summer. Who knows? We can't really say for sure. I'm purely speculating. I also know that a dual GPU powered um, AMD card is coming, and that's rumored to be coming around March. That's going to have supposedly two of these GPUs on a single PCB. That's definitely going to be faster, obviously. And this card is really expensive. If it, it, it's 549 bucks for a single GPU card. Now, looking at the current market, you can justify that price. It's faster than the you know $480 GTX 580, and it's faster than the $600 3 gig 580s. So AMD did price it where it should be based on the current market. But I was really hoping that they would, you know, put the screws to their competition and release their single GPU card around the 499, three, you know, maybe 459 price point like the previous gens. 
and you know put some real pressure on Nvidia, but that didn't happen. So it is a nice card. It's the most advanced card that you'll be able to buy in a few weeks. The fastest single GPU card. Oh, it's just so close to being perfection. Though, if it was priced a little better, who knows? And that's the whole thing about technology. It's really, I mean, if if you're waiting for the greatest thing that will never be beaten, you'll be paralyzed into buying nothing because you never know what's coming <laughs> up. Uh, like something like the Samsung Galaxy Nexus phone. This thing was announced a long time ago in the United States. Its launch date kept getting slipped and slipped and slipped. And people were like, do I buy a Droid? Do I get a Droid 4? Do I get this, a Droid X, a Razor? But that Nexus is coming and it did get released. And Dave, you guys got to play with the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, which included Android 4.0. I know a lot of my friends were just waiting for this thing. What did you think about the phone? Okay, well, um, the short answer for the mainstream consumer is definitely a hot phone. No question about it. Um, worth the wait? Mm, man, you know, we're, we're enthusiasts uh, here and, and uh, you know, uber tech geeks and critics all in one breath. And so we tend to set our expectations pretty high. And when there's this much hype and wait for a product, um, you know, it's almost insurmountable and we weren't as wild as we wanted to be with the galaxy nexus to answer your question in so many words <laughs> so what, what were the shortcomings of the, actually let's talk about the good things about the phone first because i know it's right. got a large display i think it's running a, a 720p i believe display or something in hd i know it's yes. got uh, it's got some cool tech in there what are the positives about this before we look at the shortcomings so the positives certainly are that it is, you know, gorgeous uh, Samsung display technology, no question about it. Um, and, uh, you know, so absolutely, you know, 1280 by 720, 4.65 inch uh, HD display, super AMOLED, uh, contoured display, curved glass. You know, y you really can't do much better than a Samsung display these days in handsets. Absolutely gorgeous. And, um, you know... Outfitted with 32 gig of RAM, or excuse me, 32 gig of storage, one gig of RAM, and so you know a really you know robust phone in terms of how it's configured. Uh, five megapixel continuous autofocus uh, rear-facing camera with flash, uh, 1.3 megapixel megapixel run front-facing camera. Excuse me, easy for me to say. Uh, and so it's you know it's dialed in with just about everything you could need. Processor on board. Um, surprising dual core 1.2 gigahertz Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 processor. Um, Exynos uh, could have been in here. Um, the Samsung uh, dual core that's that's out um, in other devices, the um, Samsung tablets, namely the um, Samsung Galaxy Tab 70 Plus, um, but it's not. It's, so it's this Texas Instruments OMAP uh, 4460, which does okay. And at a 1.2 gigahertz clock speed, certainly robust enough for this phone. Uh, and, of course, ice cream sandwich on board. And um, no question about it, um, ice cream sandwich is definitely an advancement. Uh, there are some really nice um, just user interface tweaks that have been brought in. Um, you know, things like resizable and movable widgets that give you access to your favorite applications. Um, recent apps buttons where you, where you can view and access recently used applications and if you want to close one um, you can simply swipe it off the screen. Uh, let's see what else we can tell you. Um, other things like you know uh, data management, you know data consumption management. Uh, you can view and restrict data usage for individual apps, um, text and voice assist um, or text or as I say voice to text and voice assist uh, control of the phone not as good as Siri by any stretch of the imagination uh, that that Apple came out with the uh, digital voice assistant um, but but you know a step in that direction and so you know there's some really you know nice tweaks that ice cream sandwich brings to the party um, we just wish the phone had you know a little bit more with it um, uh, you know it's it's a it's a difficult thing again it's it's living up to that hype and uh um you know there there's no uh s d card slot for starters um you know you you can go on from there we just wanted a little bit more um the 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 camera is only five megapixel camera eight megapixel is kind of the the high water standard now um so what what can we say you know 
Yeah, one of the things about the Nexus line, it's supposed to be Google's like anointed phone. This is the model for, the, for every other phone. This is usually the, the low, the baseline actually. And the fact that it didn't have removable storage, I thought was just, it just seemed like an odd mistake. Uh, the display, yeah. I've heard some questionable things about the display, but I've heard relatively good things about it. Uh, and the camera, it seems like, it just seemed like they just skimped out a little bit. I'm not sure why exactly uh, they bothered to do that, but I wonder if it's to keep the price down. I, I, I do. Like I, I know why they put the 5 megapixel camera in there. Why is that? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> it's, for, it's for the continuous autofocus and zero shutter lag. Uh, to manage the data from a 5 megapixel sensor, it's a lot easier to manage all the data from an 8 megapixel sensor. And that's supposed to be something very impressive about Ice Cream Sandwich is the fact that it can take uh, photos very quickly, instant shutter, they call it. So you're not like mm -hmm. waiting for the camera to come up and then you're like, touch the screen right. and then you wait. And then, like, it's apparently it's like it's almost zero seconds, and I've I've had friends say that it actually works very well. Did you find the same thing, Dave? The camera? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the camera quality, you know, for for the you know resolution of it is certainly you know really good. Um, so you can't complain about that. I, and I guess, you know, we we all just want that that you know eight megapixel watermark, you know, that whatever's highest available resolution on the market to to be delivered. Um, the other thing that was a little bit of, uh, of a shortcoming, and, and we're still playing around with the various um, uh, radio options in this phone, whether it be testing battery life over 3G or 4G, but, but battery life um, wasn't so hot. And as a matter of fact, it ranked down at the bottom of our chart in terms of battery life. Uh, 191 minutes in our battery test, which is, you know, admittedly a, a stress test where we're continuously refreshing a, a web page, web page with lots of, um, uh, you know, flash and whatnot going on, and uh, we definitely stress the phones. But you know, it didn't measure up with like the Galaxy S2, the Evo 3D, HTC Evo 3D, the, the Motorola Droid Razor. Um, you know, battery life was just. Um, just not that good. So, um, you know, Samsung certainly had an opportunity to hit it out of the park with this one. Uh, it's definitely a hot phone, and definitely something if you're if you're a, a early adopter and you want to get in on the ice cream sandwich goodness. A very capable phone. Um, just not 110 percent of what we expected to see. And this phone doesn't have li li liquid cooling. It's actually air cooled. That's crazy. I know Marco. <laughs> Hot Hardware did a roundup, horrible segue, roundup of liquid <laughs> coolers. Uh, okay, there was Intel, uh, Corsair, Main Gear. You guys tested it out. What's what's the best? Yeah. And can, are, they, are they actually very are they very different in the first place? I mean, liquid cooling is a bunch of tubes and and, and fans and motors. Right. So fundamentally, they're not very different. They all have a cold plate, some sort of water pump, a radiator, and some fans. So on that level, they're not very different. In terms of their performance, price, and avail availability, then they are very different. So we, we tested, our man Joel tested the, uh, the Intel uh, RTS 2011 LC, the new liquid cooler that shipped alongside Sandy Bridge E. We tested the Corsair H80, the Corsair H100, and we threw the Main Gear Epic 180 into the mix. That's not a cooler that you can buy unless you're buying a Main Gear system. But we wanted to show, you know, what uh, Main Gear was able to produce, you know, working with their partner, Cool It. It, it is a, a, a really unique water cooler in light of uh, uh, other devices that are available. So we just put that in there to show what Main Gear was capable of. And, you know, what you find is, is what you probably expect. The units with the larger radiators and more surface area for fans, all other things being somewhat equal, um, are going to perform the best. So the, the difference between the Corsair H80 and H100 is the H100's radiator is twice the size. It's a 240 millimeter radiator. So you can put 220 millimeter fans side by side. Um, that can obviously push more air through the radiator than a 120 millimeter model in the H80. Hence, the H100 performed better. Now, the the Main Gear Epic 180 is interesting because it has a, a really huge square 180 millimeter radiator, and the way it's configured in a shift case is this giant fan blows cool air up through it, where it's then expelled out of the system. And uh, we found that was actually tied for the best performance with the 240 millimeter H100. Um, and all of them obviously offer better performance than air coolers. And uh, we found that the, the RTS 2011 LC, the Intel cooler, was the lowest performing of the bunch, but it still performed fairly well 
followed by the H80, and then the H100 and, and uh, main gear coolers were basically tied. Maybe a little bit of an edge going to Corsair. Now, now Marco, as an expert, I have to ask your personal opinion <laughs> about liquid cooling versus not using that. Mm -hmm. Actually, using fans. What would you be okay. putting in your system? I mean, and I'm not just putting up these the, the liquid cool stuff. What are you going to use? Right. So I'm probably going to have an unpopular opinion here. I'm of the opinion I would just use the best air cooler I could get. Now, you will get lower temperatures with a, with a good uh, water cooler. But you also add a couple of, uh, couple of concerns and extra points of failure. You know, with a big air cooler, let's say you have a big giant tower type air cooler on your CPU and your fan fails. If you have decent circulation in your case, <clears throat> yeah, your CPU is going to get hot. But you may not even overheat. You may not even notice if you have good air circulation in your case. With these self-contained liquid coolers, or basically any liquid cooler, you could get a leak. It could lose its its coolant, and you could overheat. The fan, the um, the pump could die. You could overheat. The fan dies. You're gonna most likely overheat. So they do offer better performance um, when they're configured right. They're not prone to failure. I don't want to make it like you buy a water cooler, it's going to fail. These self-contained units are very well engineered. They've been out for many years. These are reputable companies. I mean, to have Intel be selling one, you know that thing's been through some serious qualification. It's not some willy-nilly piece of hardware they threw together. But for me personally, I would go with a high-end air cooler and sacrifice a few degrees because my personal rig, I'm not going to overclock it insane and risk instability. So I'll overclock it conservatively, get some extra performance, and not have to worry about a, a pump or a leak or anything like that. Now, any chance you ripped out the, uh, the whole radiator system, the cooling system in your car for a <laughs> air cooler? I did, uh, I, I did not. You haven't done that yet? You could. There were some cars out in the past that used to have the uh, whole air it's cooling thing. It's crazy. A, it's a very unpopular <laughs> opinion in, in the car world as well. <laughs> Let's move on to the Lenovo IdeaPad U400. Now, I saw the U400 and I was like, oh, it's like the U300S. It's an Ultrabook, but nah, -uh, not technically. Now, Dave, tell me about why this isn't an Ultrabook. Right. So it doesn't quite follow the Ultrabook spec. Uh, the U400 is a 14 inch. Uh, machine and it weighs in at 4.36 pounds so it's a, a shade on the heavy side for the ultrabook uh, spec it also has a, a slot load a dvd player optical drive in there and um, it comes with a discrete gpu and an amd radeon hd 6470m mobile graphics chips with a gig of uh, of ram uh, graphics memory. So it, it is a very well equipped uh, thin and light machine uh, actually strikes my personal perfect balance between weight and performance uh, but the U300S uh, would be the the ultrabook um, you know super thin and light device that uh, you're looking for if you're looking for a Lenovo uh, branded ultrabook. Now does the uh, U400 use the same kind of uh the same chipset when it comes to the processor, or did they, because it's not an Ultrabook, did Lenovo go ahead and put something more powerful in there? Yeah, that's exactly it. It's not a, a CULV, uh, Consumer Ultra Low Voltage Processor by Intel. It's uh, an Intel Core i5-2430M, uh, 2.4 gigahertz dual core uh, processor with, uh, with hyper-threading, so uh, four threads uh, available to the, uh, to the operating system, four logical processes uh, represented to the operating system for uh, processing resources and uh, it's a very capable machine actually did fairly well in the benchmarks um, and actually reasonably priced where ultrabooks typically um, are specced by the way with SSDs uh, this machine comes configured with a 750 gig 7200 RPM Western digital hard drive uh, so 879 uh, starting and 879 as we tested it, uh, fully configured uh, with uh, you know plenty of storage on board. Um, certainly, an SSD would be a, a really nice upgrade for this machine and would uh, give you all kinds of advantages performance-wise in terms of system responsiveness. Uh, but Ultrabooks typically come equipped with it with an SSD sort of as part of the spec for that instant on, uh, instant boot up or very quick boot up response time. Anything lacking with the actual U400? I mean, you said a lot of positive things. Uh, does it have that same chiclet-style keyboard that they've been using that doesn't have the, the great travel? Or is there any, any uh, negatives or flaws about this? 
Actually, you know, um, the keyboard is a high point. I mean, it's a really nice keyboard. Uh, keycaps are shaped um, in, with this sort of curved uh, fascia to them that's just really, really nice and sits really well, uh, sort of cradles your fingertips. Um, and key travel is good as well. It's, it's a really nice keyboard. My only gotcha, I just wish they backlit that keyboard because it would make it just perfect. Uh, and this, to me, again, is the sort of... Uh, sweet spot, you know. Marco, by the way, really likes a 12 to 13 inch machine, a little bit tinier. I like a little bit more screen smaller. real estate, a little bit. Uh, 11 six. 11 six. What's that? I said I run on 11 six. I like them as small as you can get them. Ah, okay, 11 six. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like I like a 14 inch machine, a little bit larger screen. Um, 1366 by 768 is fine for for resolution. It would have been nice to have a little bit higher res display, perhaps 16 by 9 might be nice. Um, but um, you know, if they just backlit that keyboard, it would have been perfect. Um, it's really a nice you know four pound weight, not too heavy. Um, Maybe add another USB 3 port. Battery life could have been a little bit better. Um, you know, Lenovo claims, um, geez, I think it's something like seven hours battery life on this machine. And, you know, we just don't, don't even ever get close to that um, in most of our testing from a lot of the, the you know, best case scenarios that uh, notebook manufacturers specify. We actually saw this uh, notebook last about 110 minutes. Um, not that long, but again, that's our stress test. It stresses all of the uh, subsystems of, of, of the notebook, graphics, hard drive, as well as uh, the processor at the same time. So worst case scenario, four hours probably is a realistic um, uptime, you know, light duty usage model, web surfing, what have you, that you could expect from this machine. So we would have liked a little bit more um, battery life out of it, but all in all, a really good effort. Some may criticize uh, the machine for being a uh, MacBook knockoff and looking at the aluminum super clean minimalistic design yeah you might say that but um, we think Lenovo really you know carved out a a nice uh, well-appointed well-built machine um, that performs real well for for not a lot of money 879 is a pretty reasonable price for this notebook See, I intentionally did not draw any comparisons to such products. I don't even know what you're talking about. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, you know what? I've, and speaking of not knowing what I'm talking about, let's talk about contest stuff. I've been, I've been on a vacation, a staycation, really. <laughs> so I'm kind of yep. in an internet coma. What's going on with the latest contest, Marco? So the, uh, the tablets of the season sweepstakes has ended. We gave away five NVIDIA Tegra 2 base tablets um, uh, about, a, about a week and a half back, maybe two weeks back. Those five tablets are gone. They have gone to all of the lucky winners. And we told all our readers and viewers that we were going to start 2012 with a bang. And we are going to. We have lined up Gigabyte for a new contest. I'm not going to reveal all of the details right now. But Gigabyte will be giving us a, a really nice graphics card, nice motherboard, other components as well. Um, we're not sure how we're going to structure it just yet. But we will be launching very soon, um, within, I don't know, a week or two tops. And uh, we'll let you know all the details then. But we're going to give away some awesome stuff really soon. Of course, those details. Fun. What's that? I said it should be fun. <laughs> and, of course, all the details about the contest and every story we talked about are available at hotharbor.com, or will be in the case of the contest. But you can go around the web if you want to see hot hardware in a different format. Maybe you want to go to dig. You can go to dig.com slash hot hardware or facebook.com slash hot hardware or twitter.com slash hot hardware or youtube.com slash hot hardware vids if you just want to see video. You want to see moving pictures. You're like, I don't want to read. I want to watch video. That's, that's what YouTube is good for. Uh, and if you want to read some horrible things, read the comments just on YouTube in general. I'm not They're saying, horrible, I'm, yes. They are, uh, they are <laughs> written in an in a, uh, entertaining manner if you've been bludgeoned with a very heavy computer case. I don't. <laughs> so uh, anyway, <laughs> on that happy note of bludgeoning people, let us wish everyone a happy new year. And uh, yes. thanks for stopping by. Happy new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Bludgeon no one. No. Please. <laughs>